Well, good evening, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally, I mean literally, does not work. Um, it's been a while since I've done anything out here. I've been kind of busy and it's been kind of hot out here. But it's amazing because now that September has gotten here, it seems like the temperatures took a nosedive. It is literally perfect out here right now. It's about 78 degrees. We got a little breeze blowing. It feels like there's AC blowing around. Uh, the AC unit's not running, so it's kind of quiet. I've got the ceiling fans going. I got the lights. We are getting ready for week number one. And come Thursday night, we're going to be out here. We're going to be live. I believe each Two blues gonna be house. I think DMV. We know that David Wiley will be here. Um, I think Rashid, the New York stinking giant fan, and you can see I've been working on the set, cleaning it up, hosing down the deck. I got all my cushions out and for breeze them because they haven't been used in a while. We're gonna be ready, and and of course, you know, I've got the music. I've got the music here. Shout out to my man Ron Oliver, of course, with the beats. And I know some of you guys, it gets on your nerves to having the music, but you know what? I enjoy it. I really, really and truly enjoy it. All right, so here's what we got going right now. You know, my man, O.C., I, I can't pronounce the name right. You know, I, I, I know people have helped me say it phonetically. phonetically. Yeah, I just can't get words right. And I know Toby's going to go in here and say, why can't you get words right? Because I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I, I got no problem admitting that I'm an idiot. Hell, if you watch Philly 500's video, me and Bad Dog, you'll see. I'm an idiot. Bad Dog's an idiot. And, of course, Philly 500's an idiot. So, you know who I'm talking about. Back in my day, back in my day when um, Washington was a good team and the Dallas Cowboys, things were a little bit different because we had what was known as bulletin board material. Bulletin board material, and some of you probably don't know what a bulletin board is because times have changed. A bulletin board was a big board, you know, had chalk on it, and then it had like uh, pegboards, I mean not pegboard, uh, you know, like boards so you can put stick pins and stuff in there. And people used to get delivered to their house newspapers. So you would get quotes from players saying things about the other guys. And so people would cut it out, physically cut it out, and they put it on the bulletin board. Well, today you've got, you know, touch screens or a TV and stuff. So they can just hear it, you know, being played on Sports Center or, you know, hear Scott, uh, Skip and Shannon or, you know, whoever talking about it. So times have changed. But the times have changed, but the premise of it hasn't. Last year they said Tom Brady basically took clips of all the people that doubted that he could come back and do what he did last year and put it together so that way it could kind of bitch slap people. I remember Chase Young said something before the playoffs about Tom Brady and things, and you, you don't want to tug on Superman's cape. I know he is only 11 years younger than me. What's crazy is I'm closer to Tom Brady's age than Micah Parsons. Way closer, which is scary to think about it. The dude ain't human. He's not, and I'm sure that he's got ears that, you know, like bat ears where he can hear everything, or is it they hear vibrate? Maybe they're deaf and they go by. I, I don't know. Anyway, regardless, you understand what I'm saying. He's not human. He's got superpowers, and so you have to be careful what you say about Tom Brady that he may take it the wrong way and get extra motivation. Now, personally, me, I don't need any extra motivation to try and win or succeed. I'm already trying to win or succeed, and I don't know that I can put forth any more effort than I already do just because somebody else said something. But that's me. So Osa, Osi, Osa, was talking, and sometimes what happens is you kind of get baited into questions. You got to understand that the media is looking for that sound bite to kind of get you that uh-oh moment. I want you to listen to it, and I want to see if you think that this is bulletin board material or top. Um, super exciting, you know. Uh, it's not something that you expect, but, you know, it's like something that you can see coming. There's expect there's a possibility as far as, like, injuries and things like that. So always got to be ready, you know. As a young player, to what level of regard growing up you hold Tom Brady and what's it like to think of 
being out there on your first game? Yeah, I mean, it's crazy because he was playing football before I even knew what it was, you know, so just to be in this game playing against the GOAT, you know, it's crazy. Obviously, can't can't think about it too much at the end of the day as an opponent. I'm going to have to do what I got to do, so mm-hmm. yeah. that is what it is. Is that something you're conscious of, like focusing on the front of the jersey, not the back of the jersey? Don't be too caught up in that. I mean, I typically don't even don't even really – I know, like, who they are, but, it, like, I'm not going to get hung up on – like name or anything like that. What's the film prep been like for the best for you and how different is it trying to prepare for an opponent, a specific opponent in a college Um, I'll say it's pretty detailed. You know, we got a good rush plan, just different formations and things like that. So I'll say as far as like rush plan is way more detailed than it was in college. You know, like you're running your plays, you're kind of kind of coming up with a rush plan for yourself and like what moves you might work on different guys but now you're doing that but within like a certain scheme and you know so what's Tom Brady's weakness not very mobile (laughs) you know been playing for 21 years dude is he's a little older not too mobile so I'll say that's probably what it is respect then how important is interior pressure getting getting his face get him off the spot passer rating goes down by a lot so our role is super important this week as far as getting after him and you know rushing our rushing our butts off. Have they shown you in meetings what his rating is inside the pocket and we get him off the spot with the rating is outside? I think they said it goes down by like 50. When Tom Brady sees this quote of he's not that mobile you know he uses any little thing to motivate him what do you think he sees this quote today or tomorrow how do you think he's going to respond when he sees it? I don't know. I mean, I feel like he's not a guy that's too worried about what I'm saying. He's obviously going to be aware of it, but I've been doing this for a while. People say this, that, and the third. I've been doing his thing, you know? You started, like Michael started. You just talked about the rookie class. And you guys feel about the impact you guys can make this year? Uh, you know, they brought in 11 of us, and they brought us here for a reason. So we're all here. We're all super excited to be here and just ready to come help us win. A lot, you know, that's a, that's not an easy thing to do, you know, making a 53-man roster in the NFL. So, obviously, everyone's super grateful, proud, but at the same time, it's done. Now we're preparing for week one. How glad are you to be out of 75? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I feel like I didn't like it at first, but, like, after a while of just playing in it, I got used to it. I knew I wanted to be in, like, a 90s number. But I feel like I made it look good. Make any number that I wear look good. Make any you know? number I wear look did you good. I did talk to him a little bit about that because he wore two in college. So I was like, you know, you cover a lot. You damn near outside linebacker. You could wear two, but I don't even think we have it available. If he did, though, I for sure would have snatched that 92 up. 197 just had a 9 in front of it? Or? Um, yeah, you know, respect. Some of the guys in the league that are wearing 97 as well, you know, Kenny Clark especially. So that was something that I figured would be cool to have a number that reminds me of someone that I respect a lot. That's how would you describe Mike's personality? What have you learned about him in the last three months? He speaks his mind, you know. He says what's on his mind, says it loud. I respect it, you know. Mm-hmm. He's not going to hide anything. If he's feeling something, he's going to tell you. And that's someone that you can respect because... There's nothing, there's no gray area, you know? No gray area whatsoever. Um, I really couldn't give you a specific one. I just, like, you know, you're always going to hear him speaking his mind. That's, like, my takeaway. What's that balance for those where he's, like, trying to be yourself and bring the energy, but also, like, you haven't done anything on the field in a regular season game yet? Um, I'll say for me, I, I just know how to listen, you know? When I heard when Wise Man once told me, when you don't have a say in anything, mm-hmm. don't say anything. So obviously, like when it comes don't to say anything. guys talking about, hey, what time are we going to do captain's run? I'm not going to say anything. I don't really have a choice. I'm going to just show up when they tell us all to be here. But as far as practice, I just want to be a guy that's motivating, you know, just giving good feedback, watching guys, and then asking the same, and then bringing energy as far as my effort and everything. So that's, that's where I'm at. On that note of energy, 
Kentucky. We saw in Hard Knocks this week both Adam and Joe Witt talking about how important it is for players to be bringing the energy and the coaches saying, like, we can't always bring the juice for you. Has that been a challenge for the defensive line during practices, or is it just something that... I would say it's just a reminder, to be honest. I wouldn't say it's been a problem. We do a pretty good job juice-wise. We have great energy in the D-line room. So they're honestly just uh, constantly reminding us of it. If, they're, if they see that it dips, they're going to say something, and that's something that I like. If you see it, say it. So they're just constantly reminding us in our ear about it. It was definitely weird not having him. He's a, he's a cool dude, brings really good energy, you know. So missed him a little bit. It's good seeing his face. A lot of the guys that were uh, on protocol are back. So just that alone, just being happy to see your teammate back and doing well gives you a little boost of energy. Quinn's so hands-on with you guys. What's it, what was it like to that week where you had to be so hands-off and not be able to you know, just be right there on the field? Um, I mean, it was a little weird, but at the end of the day, like, you can't focus on that or let it get in the way of the work that you're putting in, you know? Are you, are you aware of the timeline or tradition of a rookie dinner? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah Ricky I've did. been. My brother played for the Giants, so I've been knowing about that for a while. Are you dreading it or? Nah, I'm. I like to eat too. <laughs> you know. All right, he likes to eat too. So he, here's what we got. You know, it's amazing how skill, 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 skill. Bayless and Shannon Sharp. You just heard the whole interview. If you're telling me that Tom Brady is getting extra motivation because he answered a question that he was asked, what is Tom Brady's weakness? He's not that mobile. You know, he's played a number of years, and he's not that mobile. And, you know, his numbers go down when you get him off the point. You would have thought listening to Shannon and Skip, that literally he said Tom Brady is a wrinkled, a wrinkled, broke down, weak ass, no good quarterback. And I'm going to go up there and jack him up. That we are going to beat Tom Brady. We're going to sack him. Eight times. And we're going to get four interceptions. That's not what we did. He was asked the question, what is Tom Brady's weakness? Well, I mean, I guess he could have said, I don't see any weakness in with Tom Brady. I guess that would have been the only other answer that would have been milder. His only weakness is he's not very mobile. Tom Brady would probably be the first one to tell you that he's not exactly, you know, Mike Vick back in the heyday, that he's not Lamar Jackson. That's not his game. I don't see it as anything big, but then again, what do I know? I'm a guy with a day job and a voodoo doll who can't wait for Thursday to get here. Um, I'll call this one a nothing burger as far as bulletin board material or, you know, big screen TV nothing so with that being said you know we're gonna go ahead and get this thing we're gonna get up out of here and um hopefully <clears throat> excuse me hopefully you are having a great day and i will see you later our coach here and as always i want to thank you all for watching commenting subscribing and being part of the joe Boo sports report <laughs>